monumental step toward returning to the moon after a half century is underway, spearheaded by a groundbreaking partnership between NASA and SpaceX. Beyond symbolic landings, the mission's ambition lies in establishing a permanent lunar base, Moon Base Alpha. This innovative approach hinges on SpaceX's Starship, not just as a transportation vehicle, but as a foundational element in constructing and sustaining this lunar outpost. The Starship, specifically the Human Landing System, HLS variant, will be instrumental in transporting astronauts to and from the lunar surface, and playing a pivotal role in building and maintaining the base. This mission represents a significant departure from previous lunar missions, emphasizing sustainability and long-term human presence. The plan outlines how the Starship will be adapted to serve as a crucial part of the base's infrastructure. This ambitious project signifies a substantial leap forward in lunar exploration, potentially setting the stage for future missions beyond the moon. The partnership between NASA and SpaceX marks a crucial step in expanding human presence in space, and establishing a lasting presence on the lunar surface. This ambitious undertaking is not merely a visit, but a foundation for establishing a permanent settlement. The project showcases a commitment to more than simply symbolic presence. It seeks to create a sustainable lunar habitat that serves as a springboard for further space exploration. SpaceX's proposed lunar base, Moon Base Alpha, relies heavily on the Starship Human Landing System, HLS variant. This specialized version, designed under NASA's Artemis program, is a key component in the ambitious lunar colonization plan. The Starship HLS, with its height of 50 to 60 meters and 9 meter diameter, is significantly larger than conventional landers, boasting the capacity to transport over 100 tons of cargo to the lunar surface. Powered by six Raptor engines, the HLS variant is designed for efficient launch, landing, and ascent maneuvers. However, the HLS differs crucially from the standard Starship design. Crucially, the absence of an atmospheric re-entry capability means the heat shield and associated systems are omitted, reducing overall mass. This modification is a critical factor in minimizing the number of tanker launches required to transport fuel and supplies in orbit. This reduced mass and the removal of re-entry systems will be vital for efficiency during lunar operations. The strategic design decisions reduce launch costs, accelerate timelines, and streamline the logistical complexities of lunar missions. This simplification of the process significantly enhances the practicality and efficiency of lunar missions. Establishing a permanent lunar base necessitates a substantial infrastructure and supply chain. SpaceX's plan outlines a two-starship approach, with one carrying astronauts and the other, unmanned, transporting crucial supplies. This dual-craft strategy ensures efficient delivery of tools, materials, systems, and provisions essential for building and maintaining the base. Pre-lunar refueling is a crucial stage, ensuring the vehicles have sufficient fuel for the trans-lunar journey and lunar operations. The chosen landing site, the Shackleton Crater at the Lunar South Pole, is strategically significant due to its unique characteristics. Continuous sunlight at the crater's rim provides ideal conditions for solar power generation, while the crater's interior shadows potentially hold water ice, a vital resource for life support and fuel production. The location's direct line of sight with Earth facilitates uninterrupted communication, bolstering operational efficiency, and supporting crucial scientific data transmission. The site's strategic location presents unparalleled advantages for a long-term lunar presence. The chosen site is well-positioned to support long-term habitation and crucial scientific research making it a suitable location for establishing a permanent lunar base. The selection of the Shackleton Crater reflects careful consideration of critical resources and operational needs for a sustained human presence on the moon. Establishing a lunar base requires meticulous planning for initial activities and subsequent transformations. SpaceX's plan emphasizes the role of astronauts and remotely operated robots in the initial phases of base construction. Astronauts will deploy power reactors, solar panels, and radiators remotely, and transfer remaining fuel. This initial phase prioritizes minimizing astronaut exposure to the harsh lunar environment, including cosmic radiation and limited mobility. The use of robots will ensure efficiency and safety, while astronauts handle critical initial setup procedures. The transformation process relies heavily on robotic assistance to manage tasks like positioning the Starship horizontally. This horizontalization process, guided by a hinge mechanism and supporting structures, aims to reduce stress on the vehicle and optimize its internal volume for habitation. 
The process includes unloading non-essential payloads and venting residual fuel to prevent risks. The careful horizontalization will allow for efficient conversion of the interior space for living quarters and operational areas. This phased approach, prioritizing safety and maximizing efficiency, is crucial for long-term viability. The use of robots is essential to mitigate the risks associated with a harsh and inhospitable lunar environment. The transformation of the Starship into a habitable lunar base hinges on the efficient use of its interior volume, including fuel tanks. This repurposing maximizes space, creating a habitable area roughly two and a half times larger than the International Space Station's living quarters. The process involves meticulously preparing the tanks for habitation, cleaning them to remove any fuel residue, and installing insulation and radiation shielding. The interior design prioritizes comfort and reduces the psychological stress of long-term confinement. Functional areas, including living quarters, a kitchen, lounge, scientific laboratories, and a medical bay, are planned to support astronaut needs and research objectives. These features are designed to allow for a range of activities. Emphasis is placed on sustainable solutions. A crucial element is the development of sustainable food sources, including the potential for hydroponics or other methods for growing plants in a controlled lunar environment. The design will accommodate a wide range of scientific and living needs. This integrated design prioritizes efficiency, long-term sustainability, and the overall well-being of the lunar inhabitants. But protecting the lunar base from meteoroids is a critical aspect of long-term sustainability. SpaceX's plan involves covering the base with a layer of lunar regolith, the loose soil that covers much of the lunar surface. This 5-meter thick layer of regolith acts as a protective shell safeguarding the base from high-speed impacts. The protective layer will provide crucial insulation, mitigating temperature fluctuations and further shielding the habitat from the harsh lunar environment. This innovative approach not only protects against meteoroid strikes, but also provides additional insulation, improving thermal regulation within the base. This strategy addresses a critical hazard inherent in lunar operations. The use of readily available lunar material for shielding is a cost-effective and practical solution. This approach leverages readily available resources to enhance the base's resilience and sustainability. The strategy aims to maximize the use of local materials and reduce reliance on Earth-based supplies, which contributes to the base's long-term sustainability. The plan leverages the inherent resources of the moon to enhance the safety and practicality of the base, decreasing the logistical burden. SpaceX's plan for Moonbase Alpha emphasizes a dual-purpose approach, transforming the Starship HLS into a sustainable lunar habitat. This innovative strategy maximizes the vehicle's utility, turning what would have been a single-use lander into a reusable structure for long-term operations. The repurposing of the vehicle for both landing and habitation streamlines resources and reduces the overall cost of establishing a lunar presence. This efficient use of resources is vital for long-term sustainability and the expansion of human exploration beyond Earth. The process emphasizes minimizing the need to transport additional materials from Earth for construction and habitation, promoting self-sufficiency and cost-effectiveness in lunar operations. This dual-function approach showcases SpaceX's commitment to maximizing the practical application of its technology and minimizing reliance on Earth-based supplies. The design's adaptability demonstrates a commitment to sustainable and cost-effective lunar operations, a significant advancement in space exploration. This focus on reusability and reducing the logistical burden of lunar missions is crucial to realizing long-term lunar sustainability. SpaceX launches two lunar landers to the moon. Privately built spacecraft from Texas-based Firefly and Japan's ISPACE will conduct experiments for future missions. Two privately built lunar landers were speeding towards the moon on Wednesday after space startups from Texas and Japan split the cost of an early hours ride aboard a SpaceX Falcon rocket. The 1.1 a.m. ET launch from Florida's Kennedy Space Center saw a rover from the Tokyo company eSpace share cargo space with a lander from Cedar Park-based Firefly Aerospace, whose Blue Ghost Mission 1 will conduct a number of experiments for NASA after it touches down in early March. The two spacecraft will head independently towards lunar orbit after separation an hour into flight, with the U.S. vehicle set to land first, and the larger ice pace lander arriving in late May or early June. 
For the Japanese company, which named its rover Resilience, the mission is an opportunity for redemption after its attempt in April 2023 to make the first private moon landing ended in failure when it accelerated unexpectedly and crashed into the lunar surface. Resilience will collect moon dust for analysis and test potential water and food sources for future crewed missions. As the 11-pound, 5 kilograms rover makes a series of short, slow sorties from its lander, which is targeted to touch down at Mare Frigoris in the moon's far north. In a tweet Wednesday morning, iSpace managers said they had established a communication link with the Resilience lunar lander and confirmed a stable attitude as well as stable generation of electrical power in orbit. The goals for the U.S.-built lander are broadly similar, and if successful will help pave the way for more regular human voyages to the moon after NASA's Artemis III mission, currently scheduled for mid-2027, makes the first crewed touchdown since the final Apollo mission in 1972. NASA has paid Firefly, making its first space flight, $145 million for the mission and 10 experiments, which include vacuuming dirt, drilling below the surface to measure temperatures, and testing a device that could allow astronauts to remove abrasive particles from spacesuits and other equipment. Blue Ghost's mission managers will conduct further research during the journey, including navigation system tests and a system to protect vital computer equipment from radiation in space. Both the U.S. and Japanese craft will be operational for about two weeks after landing on the moon, the daylight portion of a single lunar day, before being plunged into darkness and shutting down. Just before lunar night, Firefly Chief Executive Jason Kim said, Blue Ghost will capture high-definition imagery of a total eclipse from the moon, in which Earth blocks the sun. The lunar sunset will provide data about the reaction of regolith, the loose, unconsolidated material that coats the moon's surface, with lunar dust conditions. We expect to capture a phenomenon documented by Eugene Cernan on Apollo 17, where he observed a horizon glow as the lunar dust levitated on the surface, Kim said. As a tribute to the last Apollo astronaut to walk on the moon, we're honored to have the opportunity to watch this incredible sight in high definition. NASA's contract with Firefly is part of a private-public partnership for the Artemis program designed to involve commercial industry in flights to the moon, previously the exclusive domain of government operations. Next month, Intuitive Machines, the Texas company that in February last year became the first private operator to successfully make a lunar touchdown with its Odysseus spacecraft, is scheduled to make the second of four contracted moon missions. IM-2 will carry a lander containing water hunting equipment and the novel Micro Nova Hopper, then can jump experiments in and out of shaded areas. Only five countries have landed vehicles successfully on the moon since the 1960s, the U.S., China, India, Japan, and the former Soviet Union.